Hey everybody and welcome back. I'm really excited for two reasons today. Uh, the first reason is because this is my first video since I started my uh, Patreon uh, account? Patreon thing? Patreon? Anyway, the idea being, if you're not familiar with Patreon, uh, go to the description and there will be a link to Patreon and you can find out how you can help support these videos. And that's really the the, the main thing here. This is the first video since I started that. So if you want to help support the videos, you can do it more directly. Uh, but the other reason I'm excited is because I actually have something really cool and new to tell you about. And that is uh, a new line of paints called War Colors. Uh, and these come from a brand new company, and really in an individual. Uh, it's a product by Poison. <laughs> now, uh, Poison, I don't know if that's what he goes by. Uh, anyway, when I first ran across him in Cool Mini or not, he was going by the name Poison, and I think the original idea was these paints were going to be called Poison as well. And uh, I think people uh, said that maybe that's not the best name for a paint. But let's, let's go back a little bit. So Cool Mini or not, it's where I, I ran across this first. And there was a, it was a forum posting uh, from a gentleman and who actually I believe his name is Constantinos, although he doesn't list that anywhere that I'm aware of. Uh, I did a little bit of internet sleuthing. Uh, anyway, uh, Poison is from Cyprus, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, an island in the Mediterranean. Um, and it's not really where one expects to find hobby paints, but what are you going to do? Now, Poison apparently has been working in the paint trade uh, as a chemist for the past 12 years or so. And he apparently is also a member of our hobby, our community, if you will and decided that he was going to take his skills in uh, paint chemistry and come up with uh, a new line of paints for the hobby. Which, laudable goal, but it's the kind of thing where you, you would normally read that on a forum and then go, yeah, right. Uh, but the thing is, is that he did it and he has actually been uh, soliciting input from the community as he's gone along he even offered some uh, early paint tests to people I think even just for the price of shipping maybe or maybe even that was free but he, he'd sent some out to get feedback and unfortunately I missed that um, and he is listening so for example like even just the name uh, his initial initial pictures of uh, the paint bottles it said poison on them and uh, that is now War Colors. So, let's talk about the paints. Um, so first thing, for some reason everybody is, is, seems to be obsessed about uh, the price of paints, and, and uh, Poison is no different. I mean, one of the first things he said in his initial posting was that he was tired of the amount of money that he was spending on paint. And I guess for somebody in the industry, it's, it's probably even more um, uh, apparent than most, like how much, how expensive that is, uh, more than it really needs to be. But in any case, uh, for those of you in the U.S., uh, the paints run about a $1.80 uh, for a 15 milliliter bottle. Uh, I believe the Vallejo paints are about 17 milliliters. Citadel is less than that. Uh, maybe 12, uh, I can't recall. In any case, uh, so it's about half the price, I guess, roughly, less than half the price of a pot of Citadel paint, which is really good, half price. Uh, now, you are going to have to have these shipped in from Cyprus. So, uh, but, and while you would think, well, that's going to be really expensive. Yes, if you buy the paints one at a time, through mail order from Cyprus, that's going to be super expensive. But luckily, if you buy them in sets, um, and there's there's a link actually in the description. So if you go down and check that out, uh, there will be a link to the starter sets. It's a lot cheaper because the shipping rate is a flat fee. It's something like three euros, which is you know less than six dollars. I think uh, totally doable. Not not really an issue at all. When you're buying in quantity, right, you want to buy at least like half a dozen bottles or whatever. Uh, but it gets better actually. So since you're going to want to buy more than one bottle, uh, if you're going to buy 
five bottles, for instance, it actually the price drops to $1.69. And if you're going to buy 10 pots or more, it's $1.57. So that's super cheap. And the sets, I believe, also reflect those price breaks. But for me, like, yes, price is an issue. It's not like I'm rich. I'm not. I, I'm not at all. Um, but I have this thing. For me, it's more important that I get a product that is worthwhile. That's the most important thing. Uh, if the product's not worthwhile, it doesn't really ha matter how much money I saved buying it. It's why I don't buy a lot of craft paints or things like that. Although I have a ton of paints. I buy a lot of paints um, from different brands, different manufacturers, because I'm always willing to try something new. And you never know when you're going to stumble across something special. Um, but for the most part, it all, they all end up being you know, roughly the same, and you kind of end up getting what you pay for. Uh, if, you're, if you're buying a line of paints that are super cheap, you generally get super cheap paints. Uh, not the case here. And that has actually been the big surprise. And let me tell you right now that I am ready to buy the entire line. And I don't, I don't, I don't usually get that excited about paints because I'm, I'm happy to, like, oh, I need a green. Well, I'll, I'll grab whatever I have that is closest to what I'm looking for and then mix a color and, and go. Uh, even when Games Workshop updated the line of Citadel paints, I was excited by the color range, but there was really nothing all that new or special about the paints themselves. Like we already knew what the shades were like, we knew what the bases were like, uh, which are now, yeah, anyway. There's nothing, there was nothing that exciting there. I'm kind of excited about these paints. So let's go over, they actually have a list of features, and this, this way I don't forget uh, about specific things to talk about. So uh, it says, the marketing blurb says, high quality hybrid action, uh, hybrid action, hybrid acrylic paints, uh, offers a smooth matte finish. Definitely a smooth finish. Matte kind of depends on, uh, on the color. It's, it's on the glossier side of matte. They're not glossy paints at all. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, they remind me, in terms of finish, uh, they remind me of P3 paints. So if you know how those are, uh, those can tend towards glossiness. That's what these are like. Uh, Non-toxic water-based hobby paints uh, designed for use on plastic, metal, and resin minis. Fine. Uh, each dropper is fitted with a child-proof top. That is true, and these, they make noise when you shake them because, they, because of the uh, child-proof cap. Um, I don't really care about that, but I do like the bottles. So, uh, the, everybody raves about Vallejo for their dropper bottles, and my problem with their dropper bottles is that paint tends to drip off of the tip and if you don't wipe down that tip before you close the bottle every time it gets all gunked up in there and, and eventually you have problems uh, this doesn't seem to have that problem and i don't know if it's because of the bottle because of the paint or a combination of the two but in any case this is about the most buildup you're going to see is is just a little bit right at the tip and it doesn't really collect and i think there's even a it looks like there might be a little nubbin uh in the cap itself which seats down into the lip of the bottle um yeah 15 milliliters of paint brush and airbrush compatible okay so let me just say right off the one thing i haven't really tried with these paints yet is running them through the airbrush. I have no doubts. I, I use pretty much everything through the airbrush, so I have no doubts that I'll be able to. The question is whether or not it's particularly good at that. Uh, colors do not separate is one of their features. And so far, that seems to be the case. So pretty much every other paint I use, actually Citadels don't se separate all that much. Some of them do, most of them don't. Um, but Vallejos definitely do. And what's been nice is you can pick a bottle right up off the table and not have to shake it and just dispense your paint and you're ready to go. Perfect consistency. 
it's nice. Is it perfect? I don't know. It's very smooth. Um, so apparently it, he's using a kind of pigment that uh, disperses completely uh, within the medium. So it doesn't get chalky at all. There's no, there's no texture to it. It is, it's really, really smooth, very creamy almost. Uh, smooth paint, no lumping. Well, we just went over that. Dropper bottles min minimize contamination, drying out risk. Okay. Uh, intermixability with other brands. That I did do yesterday. And yes, it, you can mix these with, at least with uh, Vallejo and Citadel, but I have no reason to doubt that you'd be able to mix it with other brands of acrylic paint. So some things that I noted, um, it has an extended drying time. And what I mean is that like I put, uh, I was working with the reds primarily, and I put a drop of uh, number five, number four, and number three on my palette. All of the uh, paints, except for the transparents, are just numbered. So this is red one, uh, red two, uh, red three, red four, and red five is standing by. Uh, and so anyway, I put a drop of uh, five, four, and three on my palette. I use a dry palette. I don't use a wet palette. And I'm not going to go into the, the whys and wherefores, but the thing is I just don't. I don't use a wet palette. So each of those drops was good for several hours. And I'm, and I'm talking about like a drop of paint, not like five drops of paint in a puddle. Uh, I, I use one of these plastic um, palettes. So a single drop, in fact, these are, these are leftover drops from yesterday. And each one of those drops lasted several hours of still being able to pull paint from it. And I know it was several hours because I, after putting the drops down and working with it initially, I left the shop and then came back and was like, oh, I'm going to have to put these, uh, put more paints back in. But I went back, checked with my brush. They were ready to go. It was kind of amazing. I assume then that that means that there's a lot of uh, extender in it. Um, one of the things that was, that's really interesting about that, and as I was working with it, I realized that they could be really good for anybody who likes to do wet blending. I don't do wet blending, um, or at least I don't do it very much. I have done it in the past, um, but my first reaction was, ooh, I really want to try wet blending with this paint. So if you try it out, let me know. I would really like to know what your results are. At some point, I will get around to doing that. Uh, as I already mentioned, the colors are all numbered. They have no wacky names. There's no Agrax Earthshade or, uh, you know, whatever. There's no weird names. It's all red, red three, red four, red five. Um, it is interesting in that, like, I bought a, a set of the flesh colors and it came both with flesh colors and browns. Um, but they were really appropriate. Like this is brown two that came with the flesh set. And uh, as you can see, it's very harmonious with the other flesh colors. What's really interesting is the flesh colors came with these two super bright, but very similar colors. And I think it's flesh one and flesh two. And there's almost no difference between the two of them. Oh, uh, the colors are all rated for op opacity uh, in similar to the same uh, to uh, the way that uh, Citadel paints have uh, base layer shade. There's actually four levels of opacity in the paint line, really three for the paints. And then there is a line of transparent paints, which makes the fourth level of opacity. But they have opaque, semi opaque, translucent and transparent. Uh, for example, the set of reds that I bought uh, came with a transparent red, and it doesn't really look transparent in the bottle. It's not transparent in the same way that, uh, that the ghost tints from Badger are, or the Tamiya uh, transparent paints. It's more transparent like a, um, like a translucent, more like a filter, more like a translucent uh, color like, a, uh, like the glaze, like the, the Citadel glazes. Most of the paints fall within the opaque, semi-opaque 
uh, category. Fewer of them being translucent and then the transparents are all just part of that transparent paint line. It's really cool when I finally figured out that there is a, when you look online, and, and here I'll, I'll just show you a picture of it. Uh, when you look at the list, you'll see that there is uh, a little rating that looks like the bars of your phone signal uh, for where they fall in the translucency scale. Um, the problem is that, that is not included on the bottle, so it is not readily apparent if, if you're just looking at the paints on your workspace, uh, which one, except for the transparents, because it says transparent red, transparent blue, uh, you won't note how transparent that particular paint is going to be until you learn it. Uh, I'm personally going to actually put the little symbols on the labels myself with a pen uh, so that I know immediately. And what I hope to see is that Poison will actually do this in future labels himself because I think that's good information to have right on hand. Uh, let me say that the opaques and the semi-opaques cover really well. Um, I can't say that I gave it an exhaustive test, but even when I was thinning the paints uh, in order to do layers and some blending and stuff, uh, they were really, they were really opaque. I mean, it was, um, in a way it was almost annoying because, uh, you know, trying to thin down the paints to sort of get a more translucent effect, I had to work at it more. That's actually, it's, it's, it's annoying when you don't know that that's going to be the case, but you always have to learn the, uh, the specific uh, idiosyncrasies of the paints that you're using anyway. So this is something that's gonna happen. Uh, and then uh, the semi-transparents, as you might imagine, uh, don't cover so well, but they actually work really good. They, they work really good for doing, you know, almost like washes straight from the bottle, even though the consistency is not a wash consistency. So um, that's going to take some getting used to. On the other hand, these paints feel like, to me, like they were designed for the way I paint. So it's kind of exciting in that way. Uh, yeah, they work well for layering. They blend out well. So uh, I worked on two minis yesterday, and these are both from the uh, um, Arena Rex. I believe that's what it's called, Arena Rex line. And um, since I had two sets of paints, I had the reds and I had the fleshes, uh, these seem to be perfect models, and I'll, I'll show some photographs, uh, seem to be perfect models for that use. Um, sadly, I had already started the flesh tones on these models uh, before getting to work with these paints. So the flesh tones on there are kind of a hybrid of uh, the Joe Sonia colors that I started with and the war colors that I finished with. Uh, so all of the, well, most of the darkest tones are uh, from the other paint that I used. Although I have to say that I did go sort of back and forth and up and down in terms of uh, brightness and dark. Uh, with the new paints as I was working, because I, I have a tendency to work both work up and down, and especially with flesh tones, because it's like, oh, that's a little too bright, let's go darker, oh, I went too dark, <laughs> let's go back. And so I think at this point, what you're looking at is probably at least 60, 70% of the war colors. Uh, and I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. The red that the red, sets, red set produces is nice and vibrant um, and really, it's more of a, um, uh, a yellow based, kind of an orangey red as opposed to a more blue purpley red. Uh, and I like it though, and it, it's really easy. It was very, very easy to use and the, the results were really good. Uh, same thing through flesh tones uh, the only thing is like I have this one, this flesh tone is kind of a pink and I haven't figured out, I like, I want to, I would like to be able to use these flesh tones from start to finish and really get a better sense of uh, overall how they'll work. 
but I feel like the, the flesh set gives me not just a good Caucasian flesh, which is what you tend to get with like flesh tones, uh, but with the browns that they added, I should also be able to do nice dark flesh tones, which I've been trying to do more and more of recently. So definitely excited about doing more with that. Uh, one of the sets I got was a starter set, so it also came with black and white. And I highly recommend that if you're going to get a set, you might as well get one of the starter sets so that you can get that as well. Um, the trying out the white was really, and I mostly just experimented with it. Uh, but one of the things I was most concerned about, you know, in, in general, whites are problematic. Uh, they're the paint that's most likely to get chalky. Uh, they don't dry brush well. And actually that was something else I wanted to mention because that was one of the things I did with the whites in, in particular was I wanted to dry brush with it. And what I found was that it completely reminded me of an experiment that I did a couple of years back where I mixed up a batch of white or very, very light color, almost white, uh, with a lot of uh, extender uh, and created something that felt like this kind of paint and resisted that chalkiness in the dry brush. Um, the downside is, is that it, this dry brush is differently because again, when you're even, it never feels like you're getting it dry, like you normally kind of want to do when you're doing a dry brush. So uh, it's, <laughs> you're, you're not really dry brushing when you dry brush with this, but the results are really good and it just will take you a little while to uh, figure it out. The thing is I don't dry brush that often. And so this was really just a test because I wanted to see how that might turn out. So overall, I'm super excited with these paints. I, if I could afford to do it today, I would just buy the rest of the range. Uh, and I don't normally feel that way. Again, with paints, I'm more likely to just go, well, I'll just buy the colors that I need and supplement with everything else. I don't think these paints necessarily stand alone um, completely well, like there are some of the semi-translucent colors, like these browns, uh, where I might want to use it in an opaque, and that is not an option for me, so I would have to go, and in fact I did. So in fact that happened to me yesterday where I had to use uh, a, Citadel play, a Citadel paint in place of one of these browns because I wanted to get full coverage um, and not transparent coverage, but, uh, so it, it would be interesting if you could get, um, the full range of colors in a variety of translucencies. It may be a lot to ask because I imagine that for the most part, people are just going to want the opaque colors. And it is of course the majority of the range, but it'd be an interesting idea or maybe even to just offer the medium uh, separately, that's another thought. And this is just, just came to mind because I use a lot of mediums on their own. If, if Poison could offer the medium that he uses for these paints so that you could mix up your own sort of translucency, uh, that would be cool as well. In any case, I, as I said, I'm super excited and I can't wait to get more of them. I can't wait to continue using them. And although this is really a kind of a um, sort of first blush look at it, I'm probably going to be talking about these a lot more in the days to come. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, definitely, if you're interested in checking out the paints, go to the description and uh, th there will be a link there that will take you right to the site. And that's it for now. So, again, thank you to my supporters, all three of you so far again early days but for the rest of you if you want to if you want to help out if you want to support these videos go to patreon links in the description thank you very much for watching